And then we find in the Bible all through that eschatological joy, that joy, the hope of the future. But for every Christian, there's an eschatological joy of the hope of the future to be with God forever and ever. You know what? I don't know what heaven's going to be like. But I can tell you, whoever says they know what heaven's like is going to be 10,000 times better than they ever expected. But about suffering in the face, joy in the face of suffering, Bishop Smallwood Jackson in Washington, D.C., one of my favorite black preachers of all, he said one day, and I'll never forget, your highest joy will be no greater than your deepest pain. And suffering gives you a greater capacity to experience a greater joy. Just like deep stress in your life gives you a greater capacity to experience peace. And I need that right now. We need joy. A little scripture. There were shepherds abiding in the fields by night, keeping watch over their flocks. Until the angel of the Lord appeared unto them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. Wouldn't you like to see that? And they were terrified. They didn't say, no, I get the glory of the Lord. I'm going to write a book about this and get on TV. No, they were terrified at the glory of the Lord that shone about them. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Who is the joy for? All people. It was great news. It was great, a great time when they heard that wonderful news and they rushed off to Bethlehem to see this wonderful thing that the angel had told them about. Jesus said, Until now you have not asked for anything in my name. Diane read this to you a moment ago. But Jesus said to them, Ask and you will receive that your joy may be complete. There's deep abiding joy in answer to prayer. Have you had it? You know, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. And Jesus said, you may suffer need in your life and it's going to drive you to your knees so that you can pray and ask. But that need that you feel is giving you a greater capacity for the joy that God is going to bring into your life when he answers that prayer. I believe God answers most prayer incrementally. I like it all bangs up right now. But many times God just gives it to you one bit at a time. And then one day you look back over your life and say, I prayed for that, and lo, lo and behold, I didn't see it coming, but there it is, it came. And Jesus wants us to have a complete joy, but we'll never have complete joy until we have some need in our lives. He said that. Jesus prayed, Father, I am coming to you now in this great priestly high prayer. But I say these things while I'm in the world so that they, all Christians, might have the full measure of my joy within them. You know, that just blows my mind. You and I as Christians should have the full measure of God's joy in us and the joy of Christ in us. And even as he died on the cross, I believe Jesus was still experiencing the joy that the Father had put in his life. Take this verse. Jesus prayed this. How many prayers of Jesus are answered? 100%. I don't have that record, <laughs> but Jesus does. And when Jesus prays something, it's always answered. Jesus said, so, he said, Father, you've always given me what I ask. He said that. Check me out. And so he's asking for you, he's asking for me, that you and I can have the full measure of God's joy in our lives. Joy is not the absence of trouble. Joy is not the absence of stress. Joy is not the absence of pain. Joy is an undercurrent that flows underneath of that all and never dries up. That's the full measure of the joy of Jesus. Jesus said again in John 15, 11, I have told you this, his disciples, I'm telling you about my crucifixion, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be what? Complete. Complete. You know, this kind of blows my mind that God wants you to have joy. He wants me to have joy. And he wants it to be full and complete. 
But know this, the things we go through give us a greater capacity for the joy that he wants us to have. And so I want to tell you about a couple of resilience of joy. Joy is so resilient. It's so marvelous. It's so great. But it's something that you let joy find you. You know, we are going to spend $300 billion as a society this holiday season, people seeking to find some inkling, some modicum of joy when God gives it to us free of charge. The pundits are going to be on TV talking about this was a great holiday season. We raised $300 billion this holiday season. And some Christians are reacting to that. I have a different view. I'm sorry. Jesus does not need December 25th he never needed it. He probably was never born on that day. We, we per, try to protect Jesus. You know, Jesus is not sitting over on the corner and heaven's whining saying, well, I wonder if they're going to remember me this year, December 25th. <laughs> no. <laughs> he dispenses his joy 365, 7 by 24 every day. The Romans... They, and I'd like to tell you about this sometimes, I don't have time today, but they had a festival called Saturnia, Saturnalia, and it's where we get a lot of our Christmas customs. They had trees, they had Christmas cards, they had presents. That does not make Christmas. Remember this, and I hope I don't offend somebody by saying this, Jesus does not need our holiday situation. He doesn't need it. And the world goes out there making their $300 billion, so what? We have the treasure of heaven at our disposal. Amen. Oh, the heaven. It's called his joy. And when you see the world ignoring Christmas for Xmas or holiday, don't be upset. Jesus loves those people anyway. Have you heard this? If it says holiday season on the door, don't go in. Walk right past that store. <laughs> and that's the attitude a lot of people have. Uh, you and I need to be people with compassionate hearts. They don't know any better. We can have joy all the time with Christ. The resilience of joy is a pervasive gift that goes all through creation. We talked about that. The resilience of joy is it comes by indirection, not by intention. And beloved, that's what I was telling you about. You can't go hunting joy down. Joy is hunting you down. And you live your life in Christ. You know, some of the hymns that we sing, I'm sitting there singing these hymns and all of a sudden I have a rush of joy in my soul. How God's joy doesn't come to you by... I'm going to be a holly happy Christian this holiday season. Happy ho ho ha holiday. No. And I don't care how much tinsel you put on the tree or how many presents are under the tree or how many lights you have on your house or how many things you have lined up to do or how many places you're going to go or how many things you're going to do and see. That does not make the incarnation of Christ any more valuable. And you will have joy. You know, I like to sit in my house, like we have this tree here. I like to sit in my house and just sit back on the couch and look at the tree. But I blow my whole trip when I say, you know, that needs a little bit more decoration up there. <laughs> yeah, the tree's leaning a little bit this way. You know, it's never right, is it? But Jesus is always correct. He's always right. He's the strength of our lives. We don't need to go after him. He's hunting us down. The resilience of joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. As I cultivate the presence of God in my life, the Holy Spirit brings joy in my life. I don't go after it. It comes after me. And so the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5.22, is love, joy, peace. You know that list. It's the second one. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. 
fruit of the Spirit. I used to have a house in uh, Deal, Maryland, and just a few f- feet from the uh, Chesapeake Bay, I should have where it was. And in that backyard, I, after I bought that house, there was a strange looking bush back there. Couldn't figure out what that thing was. Had two separate kinds of leaves on it, and it just looked, I thought I'd go out there one day with my saw and, and put it out of its ugly misery. <laughs> but as I went out there and looked at that tree, and looked at the ground, I saw that there was these ugly, ugly tentacles of some vine growing up into that tree, strangling that tree, and it could not live. So instead of cutting the tree down, I got in my, with my shears, and I began to cut all those vines off that tree. And it was a sorry-looking thing when I got done with that. <laughs> but it was free from the tentacles that were killing it. I could almost hear that little tree breathe a sigh of relief when I took that last vine off of its pals. Two years later, that tree had grown like four feet. It was bearing luscious pears. It couldn't have them before. You know what, Christian? Sometimes we get the tentacles in our lives. The unnecessary accruements and luxuries in our lives that we think we own, but they own us. Wrong attitudes and wrong thoughts and wrong words are like those vines are growing in my little pear tree. Let's rip them out. And so the fruit can be born. The fruit of the Spirit is joy. And so I want to get out of my life and absent from my life everything that is sabotaging the joy in my life. And I cannot let any single person in this world destroy or sabotage my joy because my eyes are going to be fixed on Jesus. Amen. The resilience of joy is this too. It's eternally complete only in Christ. Our our joy is eternally complete in Christ. Let it find you this season. Have some time where you get aside with someone you love or some people you love and don't think about the next place you got to go or the next meal you got to fix or any of that. Just sit and be together and most of all be with Jesus. Be with Christ, be with him. Maybe the joy of the Lord will overtake you one more time.